Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with another video. This time it is all on P11, which is forces and pressure. This is only a triple science uh, video, so you should be just doing GCSE physics if you are watching this video. Today's topic is a really, really short one, so it should only take about six or seven minutes. Um, please remember, if you do like the video, to drop it a like. And remember, I am now making resources for my channel, so please check them out in the video description. Pressure in solids is the most easy principle to understand, so that's where we're going to start. Uh, when looking at pressure in solids, there's a key equation that we need to know, and that's pressure equals force divided by area. This equation explains why if you were to stand on a pin, it would be really painful because of the fact the area of that pin is incredibly small, thus the pressure on your foot is greater. It also explains why this tank has really wide uh, caterpillar wheels and that's because of the fact that that increases the area. So it has a really large area and therefore the pressure on the ground uh, is less and that means the tank is uh, less likely to sink into the ground. Now pressure is measured in a unit called pascals which is just equal to per meters squared so you need to remember always to convert your units from either centimeters or millimeters into meters squared before uh, doing the calculation to find out how many pascals of pressure there are. So pressure is just the amount of force that an object exerts on another object. And the way we can reduce that in solids is to either increase the force that we're pushing down onto uh, the other object or decrease the size that that force is acting on. Pressure in liquids is a bit different because pressure in liquids varies depending on the depth that you go into that liquid. And you can show that quite simply by just getting a bottle and putting three holes in that bottle. Assuming that this bottle was uh, quite full of water and I put my three holes in there, there and there, what I would observe is at the top of the hole, uh, the water comes out quite slowly. In the middle, it comes out a little bit quicker and at the bottom it comes out really really fast and that's because pressure increases with depth and you can summarize it with an equation the pressure is equal to the depth or the height times the density of the liquid and then times gravity now the density of seawater is around 1050 kilograms per meters cubed so i can show you that pressure increases with depth by using this equation if i go two meters down in water then uh, the pressure is two times 1050 kilograms meters per cube times gravity which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram whereas if i did this at 30 meters of depth and do exactly the same uh, calculation, I will find out that it's a lot bigger. And the unit's still the same, pressure is measured in pascals, uh, but this is the reason why um, when you go down in a pool and you get deeper and deeper, you can actually feel the pressure in your ears and sometimes it can get quite painful. And that's the reason why as you get deeper and deeper, the pressure is increasing. And in fact, scuba divers uh, really feel this pressure and that's why they wear a lot of protective equipment because the pressure down uh, at depths that are quite high can be really, really great. And that's why you have to descend at quite a slow rate so your body has chance to adjust to the different pressures. So we've seen with liquids that pressure increases with depth that you go down. And with atmospheric pressure, so pressure from the air, we actually find that as you get higher, then the pressure decreases. And there's a reason for that. Pressure still equals the height times the density times the gravity. However, the density of air decreases as you get higher. Density decreases as you get higher. 
And the decrease in atmospheric pressure can really be seen if you climb a mountain. For example, uh, here's a picture of Everest. And in fact, most people uh, who climb Everest and are killed from climbing Everest die because of the fact that the atmospheric pressure at the top is so uh, small and they could, their bodies can't adjust to it and they get incredibly ill uh, from the new pressures. Now atmospheric pressure, air pressure, is just from them tiny air molecules hitting the surface of our body but it can actually have massive massive impacts if we change that atmospheric pressure on our bodies because we are so so used to it. Now there are some useful uh, uses of air pressure, for example think of a straw, when you suck the air out of that straw the drink rises because of the fact there's no air and um, it, it will rise into your mouth and you can drink. If there was no air pressure the drink would not rise. As long as looking at the pressure that liquid uh, exerts on objects we are going to look at um, something called upthrust which is the force uh, that a liquid puts on an object in an upwards direction and the reason why uh, we get up thrust is due to the fact that when an object is placed in water that object is going to displace some of that water it means that basically means move some of that water and the up thrust is going to be equal to the volume of the water that has been displaced you've probably seen up thrust in action if you've ever been to a swimming pool and you've noticed that it's much easier to lift things when they're submerged in water, that is you noticing upthrust. Determining whether a boat on water will sink or float is very important. You need to consider how much water is being displaced. If at any time the ship displaces too much water, uh, it will start to sink as it is too heavy and it will sink. However, if you notice that a ship is floating, that means that the upthrust on that ship will be equal to its weight. You can investigate uh, the size of upthrust by using a Newton meter. What you could do is you could weigh uh, an object in air and see its reading on the Newton meter. Say, for example, if this is four Newtons. And then what you could do is you could then place it in water and do exactly the same test. Now, if you see that it notices that it goes um, up and now only is two newtons, that's because of the fact up thrust is acting on that object and therefore uh, is putting a force of two newtons on that object. Now, that is all for the topic of forces and pressure. It's quite a small topic. It's only for triple science students. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to drop it a like and remember to check the video description to find many cool resources that go with these videos.